Who do you think is the brains, honestly? Uh, of Jeffrey and Gislaine? Yeah. Uh, neither. Well, here's what I mean by that. Gislaine's father was intelligence. Gislaine was very schooled in the world of intelligence, right? And, you know, understanding, like, what intelligence is is the maintenance of relationships, yeah. essentially, right? And having leverage over people and how relationships are structured and who has the upper hand at any given time and that could change and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so Ghislaine understood that. Her dad was this media mogul, Robert Maxwell, who's murdered. Um, her sisters are in tech. It's an intelligence family. Um, <clears throat> Epstein was a, you know, kind of, you know, from many people that have met him, sort of by no means brilliant guy, right? Like he was not this amazing intellect. However, he had a very good understanding of people, their their uh, appetites, their proclivities, their weaknesses um, surrounding underage women, surrounding illicit streams of money, where they wanted their money hidden. Um, I'm sure surrounding many other things as well. He was, he seemed to be very good at that. I think the way that, they both functioned was a team of people that, you know, ran this very, I think Epstein was the public face of it as a philanthropist, uh, as an investor. Um, I think Ghislaine was a, just a socialite, but uh, not just a socialite, uh, you know, to the public, just a socialite, but Behind the scenes, she was a madam. She was a pimp. She was a, an access agent. She connected uh, Jeffrey to people that were very powerful in the UK and, and, and other places that were friends of her father. Um, and they they had a, a, an operation that was based on entrapping, blackmailing, gaining leverage over very powerful politicians. So do you think there was an intelligence connection to all of this? Mossad. Like it was absolutely a Mossad. So you with with Eric on this? Oh, it was a Mossad operation. But that doesn't mean the CIA didn't know about it and give it its blessing. You know, the CIA ran operations like this in the 80s, in the 90s. Uh, these honeypot blackmail operations are not terribly new. They were pioneered by the mafia. I mean, this has been going back for a, a very long time, you know. But like have so many powerful people involved, like oh, yeah. rich people. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, that's the point. The point is to... All of these institutions, whether it's a Council on Foreign Relations or you know, all these things where people think are very like nefarious, whatever it is, Bohemian Grove or Skull and Bones, all of these things where they really are, they just create a consensus amongst the wealthiest and most powerful people on the planet. And that consensus becomes our foreign policy, our domestic right. policy, our corporate policy. So it's just creating a consensus. So if you put a bunch of young guys at Yale together and whatever they do, whatever bonding activities they do to become closer, uh, or if you put them out in the woods in Monterey, California, Bohemian Grove, or if you put them on an island committing crimes, what this does is this fosters a sense of um, you know mutually assured destruction, uh, a sense of um, you know ho ho homogenous you know ruling a, a homogenous ruling class I, I i agree by the way i should mention for the record ben is wearing a harvard shirt he yes yell, that so he was given know. to by a fat woman who's no longer fat because she had a gastric bypass well <laughs> if you were more fat forward yes like your friend right you wouldn't even make that comment but i mean i think i'm right about this where it's like it's an intelligence op they were the face of it as they moved into the digital world it became less necessary to have these physical Honey pot. Yeah, you tweeted about this yeah. that the 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 true tragedy of Ghislaine Maxwell is that it's just yet another human being losing out to automation. It's they're being replaced by AI. No matter what you think of Jeffrey and Ghislaine, it is a real issue. Human trafficking used to involve humans. Yeah. There's a human cost. <laughs> this is absolutely the case. Do you think I'm wrong about anything I've said? Well, I'm uncomfortable with the intelligent connection. You know, Why? Uh so there was is a book that, about Ghislaine's father called Israel Super Spy. Yeah, so the Mice father is definitely shady. Okay, so the father's in the Mossad. We, we no, can, I don't know about the Mossad thing. I you just, don't know about that. There's something but, about the suicide or whatever, the death. Well, yeah, but it's, it's kind of widely uh, believed. You know, he was at the funeral, or I forget if this big Israeli premiere. Like, I think it's widely accepted. No, but there's accepted. a difference between, for example, if I have a conversation with Putin, am I right. part of the FSB? No. But that's an important, you know, 
Elon Musk was once at a party with Ghislaine Maxwell at the same party, and she threw... Everybody was at a party with Ghislaine Maxwell. Well, yes. And this, so the question is, yeah. what is the depth of the connection? It, well, it's it. There's book. There's a book about it. I mean, book. it's it's. The I have depth. a lot of books about a lot of stuff to show well, you. Well, but written by Seymour Hersh. I mean, Ben, get the title of the book up, right? Get the. What is the title of the book? Written by one of America's greatest Pulitzer Prize winning journalists. Uh, yeah, it's Gordon Thomas and Mark Dillon. Okay. Yeah, but also Seymour Hersh wrote something. It might not have been a book, but Seymour Hersh wrote something as well about about him. But but again, it's there's an entire book about it. So no, I, there I, is evidence. No, I know. So um, I'm under informed about this topic. I just have a general wariness of calling people intelligence. Yeah. So because it's such a tempting, like whenever I in my mind feel a temptation uh, to see a conspiracy theory in something, I I, I uh, hesitate. So what do you think it would be if it wasn't intelligence? What and let's say it's not the Mossad. We'll back that out. Yeah. Which it was. But it's also CIA and the Mossad and Saudi intelligence are all like really tight. Yeah. And MI6, they're like bros. Yeah. So, and then there's like, like Iranian intelligence bros. and Russian intelligence and Syrian intelligence. And they're like cool. They're like friends. Yeah. So, this and is Chinese a view of the world right. with the intelligence organizations as ultra competent. I, yes, they are. Okay. Well, this is my, my view. Is they're not ultra competent. <clears throat> not all of them. But they're exceptionally well they've funded. Yeah. They're large organizations that have, have a lot of people pushing paper, and they are pretty effective at a lot of things. But there's these are not the A students of the world, I believe. Okay, let's the A students don't run the world. C students do. <laughs> is, and you don't have to be an A student if you're willing to kill someone. Truly, if you're a C student and you're willing <laughs> to put a gun in someone's mouth, yes, it's actually probably just as good as having an A. What would you say it is? If it's not an intelligence blackmail operation, what would you uh, say that it could be? I would say it's one charismatic person, Jeffrey Epstein, yeah. that was evil and committed things. Um, but that's a crazy, everyone listening to this, you sound crazy. On this show, which is why I enjoy doing it. No, but think no, about it. No, Everybody... no, no. I, I'm not. I'm. I'm a little bit playing devil's advocate okay. here, so I'm not. I don't fully believe this, but there's a there's a sense where I feel that th there's an important distinction to draw. Jeffrey Epstein being a complete manufacturer and manifestation of an intelligence agency, versus as one charismatic evil person becomes more and more successful individualist. Like yeah. on an individual level, you start meeting powerful people and then intelligence starts- I'm not saying that it's necessarily the entire intelligence agency, right? They, they, these these intelligence agencies are bureaucracies, but they do have within them fiefdoms and factions of power. You have bad actors, you have people yes. that are outside of the agency officially that have all the skills and know all the people. So it's not necessarily as easy as going like it's the entire CIA behind any of these things, right? Yeah. But there are groups of people, all the intelligence agencies do is they work for billionaires, essentially. They work for American corporate interests. That's what the CIA does. They've overthrown governments at the behest of American corporate interests. This is the CIA works for wealthy people. They essentially are the information, the muscle. And yes, where we cannot do things overtly, uh, with our military uh, and with U.S. policy and get things passed through Congress, you have a shadow organization that's able to do that. That's not terribly controversial, right? I mean, that's pretty well known. If you look at all the coups, you know, in other countries that are provable, coups may be in this country that are- you Well, know, what's, what you what's important for me to understand with this, it's, I don't think it's controversial. The question is the scale at which how many people are involved, how much- uh, like how much of it is at the core of what the CIA does versus this is a few people? Well, so, I, the, the core of what the CIA does probably is largely, you know, they gather a lot of information and analyze it. Yeah. But then they're it, like the core of any business, right? So if you looked at Walmart, the core of Walmart is you going in and buying socks and someone taking your money, you know, but then there's a group of people in Walmart making decisions and charting the direction of the company and what they're gonna do for the next five or 10 years. So I think the core of these institutions can be relatively benign, but the, there's, again, 
power factions within them that are not all homogenous, right? There's people in the CIA that had no idea what was going on. There's people that would be disgusted by it. There's people that would be repulsed by it. There's no getting around this fact. Blackmail has been uh, an essential part of the recruitment of agents. It's been an essential part of maintaining relationships with people. This is how intelligence people have often found leverage to gain information. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, that's very true. The, my question is how, um, is that increasing or decreasing, the amount of that being done? So ultimately my yeah. question is about, so whenever you think intelligence is running the most powerful people in the world, they're blackmailed and everything is being controlled by by certain very powerful figures, you you, very naturally lead to a cynicism about the future of the world that deeply troubles me. So like, I want to land in an optimism like with, with people. Have you tried drugs? <laughs> uh, no, drugs are enough, very- Not all of them. Drugs are very good for this because they optimism. make- Optimism. Well, they make you feel a way that reality might not. No, I don't think so. I think drugs- I'm not like, saying everything's cynical. I'm not saying everybody's controlled. What I am saying is that one cannot bury their head in the sand when right. there is a island and a mansion in New York City that has recording equipment. You have a guy that was let off the first time with a very sweetheart deal who's palling around with prime ministers, kings, and president. It's the definition of this looks bad. But I would argue it's the Nietzsche gaze into the abyss and the abyss gazes back into you. I would argue if all you study is the Jeffrey Epstein case, yeah. you will see devils everywhere. You would I don't think there's devils everywhere. So this is the burden of the great- That's the QAnon. Well, that's, but that's but also, I mean, Alex crazy. Jones talks about this. When Alex you is crazy. <laughs> I love Alex, but he's nuts. When I you mean, constantly analyze this stuff, you just, it's, that's all you happened. see is red. Understood. And so but I, if you don't see any red, that's yeah, also a problem. If a, there's no devils, you go, well, I don't think there's any devils. The, that's yeah, an issue. There's, a, there's definitely a balance to strike there. I, I it I, seems I, unsupported that this is one evil person and another evil person together with no larger. No, no, no. They, yeah. the, the network builds over time. Right. And they, uh, a lot of it is parties and handshakes and so on. And you greet each other, politicians. I'm sure, so okay, one one thing that seems to be the case, because I've known people that interact with Jeffrey Epstein, he seems he completely deluded them. Like the, the charisma is there and it doesn't have to do with money or uh, women. At, uh, at the core level, it has to do with straight up in the room together. Charismatic charisma. guy. Yeah, yeah. and so, I just believe that one charismatic guy can do a lot of damage in this world without first um, sort of uh, being manufactured as a strategic deployment onto the United States by some intelligence agency. Now, over time, as he interacts with more and more powerful people, he probably met, he probably got some phone calls and probably had some meetings. Yeah, I don't even think I would say that he was deployed. I think that, I don't believe that the way these agencies necessarily operate is that we're thinking of them as, you know, custodians of national interest, which I don't think they are, right? I think they are kind of work for hire organizations where there's certain people in those countries that have a lot of money, that have an idea about the way things should be run, that, you know, kind of use these agencies. I don't necessarily think that like all of these agencies all the time are focused on um, the betterment of any one particular nation state. I think there's a certain group of people that have enough money and enough power that use these agencies as ways to sustain that uh, position in society. So I think Epstein, whether it was in Tel Aviv or in London or in Manhattan, was having conversations with these people whose loyalty is really not to any particular country, but it's to their own interests. I just have to say that I am really troubled on a, on a personal level Yeah, that there's a lot of people I respect that when they were in a room with Jeffrey Epstein, were not able to see through the, were not able to see evil. 
would not have the integrity to no, understand. because they were looking at pussy. Well, this is this is the this is the the thing is, I, I mean, maybe I'm built different. <laughs> this is isn't that like a Ford thing or something? Um, built, to, yeah. Uh, like I, a rock, Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> I I just think you can't let pussy or money delude you and and destroy right. your integrity. Integrity should be above all else. And when I see that not being the case with Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, like people that have talk, spoken with Jeffrey Epstein, that really troubles me. That his charisma and manipulation revealed the people who lack integrity, in my view. Now, I could be naive because you could be the next Jeffrey Epstein and Ben could be the next Ghislaine Maxwell. And here I That's am our plan. doing this beautiful podcast and I'm even a fan. So maybe it's your charisma that's Well, nobody's given. giving me... Um, uh, the an large, island. Nobody's giving me an island and nobody's giving me the largest, uh, one of the largest uh, pieces of real estate in Manhattan. This is also the problem. When you look at this, um, you know, as a, just this independent uh, thing, uh, you look at, well, why did Les Wexner, who's the head of the limited brands, gift Jeffrey Epstein these massive, insanely desirable pieces of real estate? Uh, it's one in New York City, right? Um, what is the connection there? That's that that connection has not been probed. Yeah, yeah, at that all. one. Yeah, what people have spoken about that's really shady. I mean, th that well, it's just a shady connection, right? So you have this guy who is a well-established human trafficker, and you have his biggest benefactor uh, financially not questioned at all in any meaningful way about this. I mean. You can be as as averse to conspiracy theories as you want, but a lot of times, unfortunately, they just become the news. And this has kind of become the news. Yeah. Yeah, it's become the news. But I understand your thing. I think your thing's valid. The QAnon movement, which is psychotic people whose minds had melted when they got a few nuggets of truth and then they concocted Disney-esque childish stories yeah. about good and evil because they wanted everything in life to have the clarity and certitude of religion. And they created this thing where everyone in Hollywood's evil and everyone's a pedophile. And then dead people are gonna come back in JFK Jr. It was, an, it was a very religious movement. That's what happens to people when they see devils everywhere and they're unable to uh, differentiate fact from fiction. And the, on the other side, there's similar things. And the, the, uh, the scientific community has really been disappointing to me about the level of arrogance, how they dismiss every conspiracy. They, they dis dismiss basically everything as a conspiracy theory that's not like very narrowly defined uh, public policy. I watched your interview with the CEO of Pfizer, that guy, the Greek guy who owns a diner. And what I like about <laughs> that interview <laughs> was that yeah. he was a um <laughs> no but he's a diner. you've offended he, he uh, owns, the greeks the italians a diner who's he owns even though he's the ceo of pfizer he literally course, owns yeah. a diner in astoria queens where he brings out spanakopita and yells at his his wife and their nephews who work at the diner yeah by the way that's the reality i'm guessing his son is a is a fan of yours because uh his son mentioned the podcast he likes he's a fan of this podcast uh or my podcast and i'm that guessing doesn't mean they're a fan of me i mean very smart people listen to you that doesn't mean they come over to me yeah they should that's the that's <laughs> yeah that's the, the the next step but my answer to him is less listening to lex friedman and more getting people mozzarella sticks in your father's yeah, diner. get back to work <laughs> because when i see that guy you go oh he's a ceo of pfizer i go this is a, a guy who owns a diner yeah and it's a struggling diner but it's good they yeah get, they make they make good they get mileage out, out of the coleslaw let me finish up with this ben how long have we done we've done a while can i just say yes before you finish up yes how much i love ben He's ben really the best part of your podcast. Ben is a, that's not true, but Ben is a, no, I love Ben. Ben is essential for me to do what I do. And no, um, he's just a kind soul. And I can, he's a kind really soul. He's a that. good hearted person. He's a good hearted person. And he works very, very hard. And he's one of these people where I'm lucky to have a Ben. Not everybody has a Ben, right? So I'm lucky to have him. Now that being said, 
He must be watched. Very closely. Harvard. He must be oh, watched. Oh, you know who else closely. wore a Harvard sweatshirt? Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. Is that the is that the reason you yeah. yeah. But Ben must be watched like everyone. They must be surveilled. Yeah. 